Across South Carolina this morning, a Spartanburg man is waiting to learn his sentence after pleading guilty to forcing young girls into prostitution. All six, ages 20 to 24, have been charged with at least one count of conspiracy to commit trafficking in person. What we're seeing in our community are sex traffickers who are um, manipulating these girls. They are um, trying to meet their emotional needs. Snatched from the safety of our neighborhood and sold for sex. It's happening to some of the most innocent victims, kids. But tonight, sex trafficking, something happening right here at home. Officers arrested four people tied to the human trafficking operation. When you look closely, these women are in fact not criminals, but hostages walking among us. Business. It's estimated the pimps make $650,000 a year selling children. The younger girls, 11, 12, 13 years old, go to the highest bidders. There is no better bang for your buck these days, no better job opportunity than selling children for sex. It's big business. A pimp can pull into a truck stop with an RV full of seven girls and make $1,400 an hour. This fundamental misperception is somehow a pimp and this girl are dividing up money or something. Every penny she earns goes to the pimp, every penny. And if she holds some back or she doesn't meet her quota that she is given, of whatever, $700, $800 that day, then she is gonna be beaten up. that it is a real and widespread problem here. The FBI says a raid in more than 70 cities led to the arrests of 150 pimps and the rescue of more than 100 sexually exploited teenagers, some of them as young as 13 years old. Sex is a part of life. I think a woman, she, if she wants to make money off it, she shouldn't have to go to jail or somebody that's helping her. It's her life, it's her body. Why should anybody be getting in trouble? Why should the Johns be getting arrested because they bought a woman? I was the guy that used to say, this is the world's oldest profession. Uh, you would have heard those words come out of my mouth. I was the guy that would have said, this is a victimless crime. Little did I know, really, I was ignorant, what was behind uh, this, and that there was this clandestine system of pimps and traffickers who were using these women for their own financial gain. How long you been doing this? Six motherfucking years. How much hoes you got up in your stable? Nigga, I don't pimped over fucking, over this time period, I don't pimped over a hundred hoes, nigga, you know what I'm saying? I uh, what, what are we going to do for it. today? You're going to find me a bitch. Find you a bitch. You can split a bitch in half. It's all up to our fucking kids. Shit, you know what I'm saying? Do that. to fall in love with you and get a girl to be willing to do this. It just happens. Like, most of these girls, like I said, they're broken. It's not hard. You just gotta answer their call. Fantasy wedding in that house with a pink fence. You sell it to her. She'll do it. Why would she do it? 
You just sold her a dream. I know that pimps and hoes wear real. I just thought Little John and Don Magic Juan made it, like glorified it or whatever. Like. I, I never knew. It, it just seemed almost like he was like my boyfriend because that's just how it was. Like really, I don't know. He told me that he was in love with me. He's like, I would love you a lot more if, we, if you brought in more money and stuff like that, whatever. Like we could have more fun. We could go more shopping. We can have more this and we can have more that and stuff like that or whatever. I love my dad and I forgave him. And I love my mom and I forgave her. But I'm like, why are you not coming to save me? We call this program the Brooklyn John School. And gentlemen, that is everybody here tonight. The men paying for sex, the Johns. So now here's the scenario. You're getting, your, you're getting off in the car, and now the cops pull up, we got you. I always operated this way. If you act like a gentleman, I'll gladly treat you like a gentleman. And you know what? This little girl next to you, she's already been locked up 30 times. Question? Yes. How long before the break? All right. <laughs> <laughs> When I was first elected Attorney General of South Carolina, I did not think that human trafficking was the kind of problem that we would have to deal with in our state. The International Labor Organization estimates that there are nearly 21 million victims of human trafficking every year. It is the fastest growing criminal enterprise in the world. It is second in size and scope only to drug trafficking, and within the next decade it will probably overtake the drug trafficking trade because traffickers look at human beings as a commodity that they can use over and over again, whereas drugs, they have to go back and get more drugs. So human trafficking is growing like a cancer, and the United States is currently the number one destination for human trafficking in the world. Just this past year, we have gone from one of the worst to one of the best states in how we legislate laws that enable law enforcement prosecutors to go after human trafficking. But it can't belong just to cops and prosecutors. The war on human trafficking has to belong to us all. Too many mornings, just a choking down this town. I guess your reasons for not leaving just for now. Just last year, I spoke to a law enforcement officer in the Low Country who said something to me that actually shocked me. He actually said, Alan, as I investigate these cases, I have learned that I can't stop finding human traffickers. Everywhere I look, there's a human trafficker there, and there's a victim, and there's a destroyed life, and there's a family that's being destroyed because of this crime. That was shocking to me because, to me, human trafficking was a crime that happened in a Hollywood movie, not here in South Carolina. So I took that, and we went to the General Assembly, and we got legislation passed where everyone came together and gave us the tools, the state grand jury and the new human trafficking laws to go after human traffickers in an unprecedented way. We're taking the war to them. Spent one too many mornings Just a choking down this time I guess your reasons for not leaving just ran out I guess your reasons for not leaving. If you see something, say something. If you have questions about human trafficking or how what you can do to fight this horrible affliction on our state, then reach out to the Attorney General's office, reach out to your local law enforcement, reach out to the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division. There are plenty of resources out there for you to learn more so that you can protect your family, yourself, and your community.